Hey friends, so I did a good one. I have two cameras. I have a Canon that I used for years for my videos, but it only has the little condenser mic and I never liked the audio. So a while back, I bought myself a real nice Zoom Q8 that can actually take a professional microphone. Well, the Canon did something weird to me and it's the one I also use for filming these videos. I had it all set up and all of a sudden the camera quit working, so I had to use the zoom. And as you can probably tell, I forgot to switch it over to its internal audio, so there is no sound here. What we're doing right now, we're putting the neck on. I just put it in, gave it a couple of taps with the rubber mallet, and checked it, checking the gap here. And now the pocket is nice and tight, so I don't have to worry about the neck moving while I do this. We flip it over like this, and the holes in the body are already there, but we need to drill some pilot holes for the neck. So what I've done here, I picked a drill bit that is exactly the same size as the holes, so that the holes in the body serve as pilot holes, your guide holes, while I drill some uh, pilots for the screws that go into the neck. Now, I discovered that two of these holes actually got lacquered over by the spray, but my drill made short work of that stuff, so that was no big deal. I just had to this particular drill, I have a little trouble with the chuck, and every so often, the bit likes to try to come loose. So, uh, yeah, I may end up getting another one sometime soon. But for now, this is what I have. I generally only drill these holes maybe a quarter of an inch deep. The instructions say don't to drill it too deep for obvious reasons. But I found that I don't need to go especially deep at all, just enough to give the screw a little bite into the wood. And then, the less of the wood I drill out, the more the screw has to hang on to. So we blow the sawdust out of them here, and then we will go ahead and we will put the back plate on and we'll put the screws in place. As you can see, I have a little dinky screw tip here Ordinarily, I have a longer magnetic thing that holds the uh, screwdriver tip. I don't know where it is. Somebody borrowed it, and you know how that goes. So we go ahead and we get the screws in place here like this. And now I'm not snugging them down simply because little tiny variations in movement sometimes have the holes not exactly aligned. And so leaving the plate loose gives me the latitude to shift it a little bit so it fits everything. Now along about here, my drill crapped out on me, so I got to finish that stuff by hand. Let's move on to the controls. Now the main reason I'm doing the, the controls is because of the ground wire. Right there, I had poked it through the hole backwards so that I could find out where it comes out in that cavity. Once I found that out, I pulled it out, and it's time to insert all this stuff. I decided to put the jack through its hole first, which is what I'm doing right here, because, because that will keep it out of the way, and it'll also help hold a few things in place while I'm working on the other stuff. So, you may remember that when I first got this thing, I had to drill that jack hole out a little bit. Um, and apparently, I didn't drill it enough because it took a little bit to get it through there. And it'll take a little bit more to get it back in. I actually had to bend a couple of the contacts a little bit to get the whole mess to fit back through there. But... Those are minor things. They're no big deal. Right here, I'm putting the outer plate back on that jack so that it will stay in place. And uh, once I finish fumbling with it here and get it into its proper position, 
I'll go ahead and take a screwdriver to it and put it in place. Now it's time to poke that uh, ground wire through. And here's the thing. The hole is exactly the same size as the wire. So you either hit it dead on or you try again. I had to try like four times. Uh, as you know, my good old shaky hands are a bit of a mess. Now... I had to put the controls more or less in place so I could even get to where this thing goes. And then <laughs> I finally got it to start going. Uh, it got almost through and stopped. That's because over on the other side, there's still some lacquer plugging the hole. And so... I'm sit here, I'm trying to poke it through, and I can see it has actually pushed a piece of lacquer up to this end of the hole. So I can clear that out with this nice pointy knife. Now this knife is a novelty. It is actually a double-bladed little, um, almost switchblade type thing. It has two of these pointy blades, that come out and they form a batarang. It's a Batman knife. This is about all it's useful for, but it did clear that out for me. And I was able to poke the wire through with uh, no problem. Here, I'm using a tiny Allen wrench to finish reaming it out. And then we can finally get the hole, get the, get the wire poked into the hole and get it to come out the top of the body where it's supposed to be. So as you can see, it's going on through there now. And there it is. So that's taken care of. Now we will drop the controls into their various places like this. And we will get them will get their nuts and washers put on <clears throat> and that wasn't as easy as it seemed as you may recall they gave us plenty of wire to to hook these things up and one thing about this wire is when you're trying to do something intricate with it it comes to life and does whatever it pleases so the controls are in, the nuts and washers are on, and so everything is set. We are ready. Next time, we will go ahead and place the bridge. That is, uh, yeah, one of these guys fell out. So that's actually the jack that fell out. I hadn't screwed it down yet. So... I'll fumble around with that a bit and get it put in. And in the process of doing that, one of the wires is going to come loose from it. But that is a small problem that I can easily take care of later on. So here we are. We have the jack all in place. It's finally getting in there. I Again, I had to monkey with the contacts a little bit to uh, get it through that poorly drilled hole. But eventually, um, as so frequently happens, I won. And so it's in. All that matters now is to take a screwdriver to it. But I'm using a nail here to make some guide holes. I just make a little tiny dimple because these screws are small enough it doesn't take much. I just make a little tiny impression there, just enough to get through the lacquer and into the wood. And then these little bitty screws will go in quite nicely. So here we are. We're all set to put the bridge on next time. This wire was the crucial part, and as you can see, I have plenty of it. To next time, I will figure out how much of what I need. I'll cut it off and strip it 
and lay it out underneath the bridge. The other thing I will be doing is I'm going to be putting some painter's tape over this because I have to draw a bunch of lines and I don't want to draw them on my wife's painting. I also tied a knot in that wire so it can't slip out by itself because, yeah, wires do that to me. So here we're talking about where the bridge is going to go and what it's going to take to get it in place. And there we are. So, thank you for enduring my little flub here. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you next time.